we're going to talk about some exponential growth today. All right. So on the spot, here's your choice. 100 grand, like this 100 grand, right? Or a penny doubling a day every day for 10 days. Which one do you choose? Taking too long, you might miss out. Penny? Penny? Yeah, there you go. Good choice. Yeah. I'll take the candy. Candy. I'll take the penny. 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 Okay. Oh. So, unfortunately, this penny is like uh, this fake currency that only survives this 30 minutes, and there's no actual exchange. So, those that missed out, come on, man, go chocolate all the time. Uh, what is it? Ten days, penny a day. Someone with a quick brain. Ten day. One, two, four, eight. Ten cents. Not 10 cents. And then it doubles every day. Doubles. <laughs> 40 bucks? Brady? Oh, all right, let's, we'll, we'll finger count. Penny, two pennies, four pennies, eight pennies, 16, $4. Thirty-two, sixty-four, dollar twenty-eight, two fifty-six, five twelve, five dollars and twelve cents. So, I value candy high, so I'm good with taking the candy over the five dollars and twelve cents. But if you want to change your mind and get a candy, I'll give you one regardless. I'm changing my mind. <laughs> Better question. Forty-two dollar answer. More. Sweet water lotto jackpot. Now let's make it. Now, I don't have this to offer at all. No fake currency or anything. But again, on the spot, million bucks, penny a day, and I'm going to change this up. So for XX days, how about the million or the 10 days? Well, we know that's $5.12, right? So you're taking the million. What if I up this ante to 25 days? What do you think? Million? Who's for the million? One? Two, two iffy, three, four iffy. I mean, you only got three seconds. That's all I'm giving you. Otherwise, you get nothing. Penny doubling. Couple. Maybe I see two. All right. Uh, 28 days. Do I change your mind now? You're going for the million or the penny doubling. Any other millions converted? 28 days. No. 30 days. Now are you converting? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, either way, you're not going to whine about it, right? I mean, a million bucks. I'm good. So, we'll get to that. I'm going to hold the suspense. That way you know, like, oh, would I have won more than a million? I don't know. We'll get there. So, to put this in perspective, I stole this. Um, I am not a biologist. Any biologist in here? Okay. So I don't know. First off, I was kind of curious, how do you average three or four liters annually? Usually an average is like solid, right? You either average three or you average four. Or if you want to say collectively 3.5, like no one female rabbit can give three and a half births in a year, right? Not possible. Half a birth, premature, they don't make it. No, we're not counting. That's whole numbers regardless. But three or four, all right, whatever. I'll take it for what it is. And they produce each litter between 1 and 12 babies. Well, between 1 and 12, we could average 1 and 12. What is the average of 1 and 12? Six point five. Six point five rabbits. Okay, where's that half a rabbit? I don't know where to count that. But the average is 5. And so what does that mean? That means, right, there's, there's not as many 12 litter births for these eastern cottontail rabbits. So, other fun fact there is uh, they can get pregnant again almost immediately after giving birth. Two other things, and again, I stole this, I'm not a biologist, uh, the gestation period. They are pregnant for about one month, okay? Do their thing, one month later, little babies. 
And after about four years, the female does lose interest. <laughs> so Easter was recent, so peeps, right? I want to show this, like, what does that mean? And few factors here, though. I'm talking in a controlled environment, so, right, there's no coyotes out there possibly eliminating this mathematical uh, exponential growth. Um, natural selection, we know, occurs in the real world, too, and no, like, disasters, right, drought or lack of food. If this was un uncontrolled, what does this look like? Year one, these two had made their averages, right, took just that average, it said five per liter, and then I just did average of uh, four liters there. And the colored boxes will make sense here in the next slide, but anybody quick at math, how many bunnies are there total now? 22, right? Groups of five, I set them up. I know the boxes throw you off and not really intentional. Uh, I just forgot to delete them, honestly. Anyways, 22 after year one, just from those single male, female, hypothet, theoretically, right, under those average conditions. But year two, each of them begin to breed. Uh, it was after one year, yes, after one year, the, uh, the offspring will start breeding as well. So I kind of grouped them, and there's where the colors came in. The green, right after the year, they have that full year of reproduction because um, they were born in that first litter. But then that second litter didn't get the full year of reproduction. That's why there's a few less peeps uh, nine months out of that year, and then six months and three months. All right, how many is that? Just kidding. 172. And if we went one more year, 522. And of course, that is just based on those two. And I wanted to, again, show a visual so no coyotes, you know, pick them off. And, and we're all based on averages there. That's fast, right? I, I have some friends like that. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Pretty close. Uh, questions so far? All right. All right, so that is what exponential growth looks like. So I want to take a minute to kind of think of a few scenarios here. Which of these look like exponential growth? So each year, you get a raise of $2 per, net per hour. Exponential growth, yes or no? no? Most heads are shaken no. No, that, that would be linear. It's not that every model can fit linear exponential, but in this case, that is a linear growth. But it's not exponential, right? You're, you're getting, depending where you're at, $2 raise could be great, right? or it could be minimal, right? If you're making $200 an hour, a uh, nuclear physicist, not me, um, $2 an hour, like, thank you, I guess. Like, I could buy an extra coffee a week or whatever. Um, where high schooler, part, working part-time, $2 an hour is a great raise, right? If you're at $10 an hour and you get a $2 bump, Finally, you can afford the gas at the moment to get to work. So uh, my first job, $3.85 an hour, and I got a 40 cent increase per hour, 425. That's over 10%. That was an amazing raise at that time. 2% annually, is this exponential? Hmm. What do you think? Don't raise your hand, you can just say it. <laughs> I think so. Think so? No. No? Questionable? So it will probably make more sense to see the definition. Um, that one is, but just throwing some things out there. And to begin, honestly, our minds aren't trained to think exponentially. So if any of this got you already, like, don't. Don't feel bad. Like, there are tests out there to show 
the, the psychology behind it, and we're not trained to think exponentially. 2% growth is not much, but if you get that on top of your new salary each year, that is growing exponentially. The spread of COVID-19, exponential? Most models would agree yes. Okay, I am not a scientist, but you do a quick Google search and you can see that it definitely had a form of exponential growth. Now, we, I'm not gonna, for this uh, presentation, not gonna decipher between exponential and logistic. We could always constrain the time. Logistic means at some point, right, if you caught COVID-19, I mean, now there's new variants, but the original strand, whatever that may be, uh, supposedly, you know, you can't catch it again for X number of days. So at some point, everyone caught it, or most people caught it, and it levels out, right? So exponential could be constrained to time. Let's say after two years, you know, this many people caught it, and it no longer grows exponentially. The balance in your savings account at that whopping 0.05% APY, exponential? It is exponential. It is small. so small. I mean, you may not even notice. Yeah. But if you can survive another 2,000 years, your account <laughs> may be up there, OK? Each month, you put a $100 bill under your mattress. That accumulation, exponential or not exponential? Linear again. Every month, you're stashing 100 away. Hey, inflation, I don't know. 0.05% risk in the bank, I don't know. But if we're in Wyoming, a lot of people like it. Keep that hard cash, right? Uh, the number of members in a Ponzi scheme or the pyramid scheme. What do you think, exponential? Also exponential, okay? I, and if you don't know what that is, it's a quick recruitment to earn money. Come see me in my office later and we'll get you going. Joking, don't. <laughs> So definition, it's a growth rate, rate, what is rate? What do we think of when we hear rate? Percentage. Percent, right? Like, I mean, it's not always percent, but like miles per hour, right? We're thinking a rate per something. But percent comes to mind, and proportion, again, percent. So typically, if you see percent, exponential growth. Okay, so it becomes ever more rapid in proportion to the growing total number or size. Um, it's important to see the book definition for these things because sometimes it's really hard to put a something you see into words, right? But how do we not contradict ourselves? For instance, like how do you define a circle? That's tough. You create a definition for a circle that I cannot uh, have a, a counterexample for. It's a tough thing to do. Lesson for another day. Now here you have your sheet of paper. Go to measure its thickness. I'm joking, you can't measure that thickness of a paper. Come on now. I'll give it to you. It's 0 .001 centimeters thick. Fold it in half and now measure the, thick, the new thickness. And you should have a pencil as well so you can write it down if you can. So nobody asked me hot dog or hamburger style. It doesn't matter. Fold in half any way you choose. So preferably use the ruler or protractor. It has the metric side in the center there as well. Can you measure that thickness? Doubtful. If you can, you uh, are my new caliper. So repeat it until you actually can measure that thickness of that paper and keep track of how many times you folded it.
Is it too hard to fold yet? <laughs> if anybody can hit 10, let me know. Maxed out six times. Is that that's as much as you could get, huh? And can you actually measure the thickness now? I know there's a little room for error with, right? We need to like compact it down as hard as we can, but it's a good approximation. You got it with six. What was it about? About just about a millimeter. Mill centimeter? Yeah, it's centimeter. centimeter. Yeah. So six times about a centimeter. And everyone else, like somewhere around there? So I meant to throw that up a second ago, but it seemed about six folds. Exponential growth? What do you think? The thickness of that paper. Damn. Every time we're doubling, right? So 0 0.001 centimeters, we could write the theoretical math of what it would be here. But six folds, we got about a centimeter. Ten folds, no one was able to do it. Come on. So actually 10, if you compacted it, and, and we did the actual math right there, since we have that 0 0.001 centimeters, you'd finally barely break a centimeter ten folds later. So 25 folds, how thick is that? Give me a guess. Two and a half centimeters? Two and a half, you agree? Someone else? Five centimeters? Four centimeters? That's it? 15 centimeters. Hmm. Come on, guys. Uh. So, our brains cannot think exponentially. <laughs> How come you cannot fold that 25 times and get me 1,100 feet high? What's wrong with you? Go, go do some push-ups, man. Bench press. <laughs> so it's not. Um, but mathematically, if we did this 0 0.001 multiplied by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right, 25 times later, that's where you're at. 1,100 feet, about a 100-story building, approximately. <laughs> All right, the charts are a little small here. Um, so I, Right, my title is your exponential growth, but in order to really demonstrate exponential growth, it's easier to bring in some bunny rabbit examples, this paper folding, so we could see it, right? What, I mean, to see 2% growth like we talked about, you're gonna be like, eh, that, I don't see that exponentially. It is, it's just, it takes a while. So COVID-19, uh, one statistic, here from world of meters without getting political here. It doubled every three to four days. And exponential growth model, here we see it, right? It looks like nothing for quite a while, then suddenly out the roof. Why did I put this one up? Um, we can deceive with models here. And if I change the scale, this is called a logistic, mo uh, logistic scale. We're counting at base 10. So the small numbers here is 0.1, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. And so those increments are not even, not even close, right? They're powers of 10. So it looks more linear if I do it this way. If I wanted to try to fool my audience, I'm not saying that's what they did here, but if I did, I could get tricky with the scale, right? I could play with my scale and make something exponential look non-exponential. 
All right, that penny doubling. Again, it, the, the um, graph here is a bit small, but uh, here's the million. So here's the days here at about, let's see, that's 30, so 29, 28th day. So if you took 28, uh, the penny doubling at 28 days, winner. Uh, anything less, you lost a little bit of money. Day 30, over 5 million. Okay. Now that, I think, is tangible. I could see money, right? A penny doubling it for paper folding, okay, it's still like not a believer. There you go, a million bucks. It only took 30 days for over $5 million. But if I change that scale, doesn't look as impressive, right? Again, the, the left-hand side, powers of 10. If we talked cumulative, because I wasn't too clear, like, okay, do I get that first penny and the two pennies and the four pennies and, right, do I get it all? Okay, if we want to talk cumulative, obviously it's a bit more. So there are the values there. If you were to gain each day, um, the last graph, right, showed just what it is on day 30. This is the total. So 10 million bucks. I'm not going to cry about the million, but I'd be kind of sad that I lost out on another nine, right? Oh, 9.7. Next, I just had a few other things about exponential growth. So toddlers and their learning capacity that each day, right, how much they learn. At some point, you get my age and you're like, maybe even negative, start forgetting things. So that's where the memorizing part came in. Uh, but there's definitely exponential growth at some point. Since it's that time of year, my yard sees it and I'm very upset about it. Weed growth can be um, demonstrated exponentially. Uh, you know, sad to say, but drug abuse, also the potency and tolerance. For instance, uh, like I put this picture because you go in for surgery that IV, like it hits, if anyone has had a surgery, right, it hits you hard, like boom, that's, and then the exponential decay, actually it starts to wear off gradually. So we could see exponential growth or decay. Increasing or decreasing, and here's another decay. You go buy your new car, you're so excited, right, and you wanna sell it because you already figured out you want the next model up or something, well, it depreciated, except for these past two years, we're in a weird an anomaly. Used car um, sales are, my car gained some value, weird. But typically, anything new you buy, right, depreciates. All right, compounding interest. So let's talk a second about this. What are the things, so you invest money in a bank, what are the things that are going to help your money grow the most? What factors do we have to consider? Interest rate. Interest rate, 0.02% savings account. That's amazing, right? No, get it out of there, move it, find somewhere better. So rate is a, a factor. What else? Time. Time, yep. Uh, you leave your money in there for a year, you're not gonna see much of a difference. You start seeing it, you know, 20, 30 years, truly, building your retirement account. Uh, there's one more. How many times you compound? What's that? No. Oh, so yeah, compounding, I, I should have clarified that too, yeah. Uh, do you get interest each month, right? Is, is it each day, is it each year? So how often does your interest compound? I would also add, how much are you investing? So there is that, but I, yeah. I forgot compounding because usually in, in math we throw that in with time or in Excel we throw that in with time as well. But compounding, definitely important. So a few things to compare these. So let's compare time first. 6% interest to accumulate a million. Uh, you would need to deposit 166,000-ish and leave it there for 30 years at that rate. Anyone got that line around? Can I borrow it? I don't have 30 years to spare, no I do, I'm just joking. 
Uh, so if you have more time, though, 40 years, you only need 90,000-ish, right? I also don't have that line around. So I like this example better. How about each month? So same 6% interest. If you have 30 years to spare, you need to put about $995 a month away, or if you have 40, $500 a month. Look at that time, 10 years, right? It, it, it's, it doesn't cut this down by a third. If we're going 10 years later, it's almost half. Okay, that's the power of time. Same thing with the example above. Right, an extra $75,000 if you don't have that extra 10 years to spare. And that's why you'll hear invest early, right? Start young, start young. I regret not starting earlier. What if you, you, you know, get a little better return uh, that you, about the S&P average over an extended amount of time? Is that fair, Steve, about 12? Yeah. So, Somewhere around there, you know, you're investing wise, not too crazy and not um, all in bonds. But if you went long term, 30 years, 12%, now you only need 27,000 power of interest. Okay, we doubled the interest. It did not just cut our investment requirement in half, it cut it down a lot. Okay, 40 years, only need 8,000. That's bit more manageable, right? Maybe sell your car, put it away. There's your retirement account. But even easier, at least for most Americans, right? We're not good at saving um, $286 a month each month for 30 years or $85 a month for 40 years. We all could do this, right? 85 bucks a month, come on. Like work a few extra hours, cut out some coffee, Everyone can do that. That's reasonable. That's obtainable. But 40 years, you got to start early. If you're 50 years old, you know, you may not reap the benefits of that. Questions about any of that? Too late for us. Huh? <laughs> I can't believe for <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're only 35. Right? <laughs> <laughs> do that time. Right. Yeah, you know, All right. Well, right to, away, I cut that in half, and I was like, well, in 20 years, I could have half a, half a million. So, I mean, I, I was like, yeah, realistically, in 20 years, that would benefit me. Remember, the power of compounding doesn't work in halves exactly like that, though. Oh, so, that yeah, the, you just burst my bubble. Thank I, you. Sorry. <laughs> we need top, but you I could know, get a better I'm rate. 50, you know, I'm in my 50s, so I was like, well, shoot, I don't have 50, or, you know, 40 years, but. Go to Forbes, learn some uh, investing yeah. strategies, and uh, then get a higher rate, and then you don't need as much time. Right. So, all right. To tie this all together, I, I wanted to talk about, first off, like saving, and also, like we talked about, in, uh, raises, right, 2% what, or whatever it might be, and compared versus inflation, especially right now, that's a hot topic, okay? This last year, ooh. But you could see, usually, it's not that bad, but I did throw up a table, and again, it's small. If you were here for the late 70s, early 80s, you saw things, <laughs> you saw things uh, worse than we're seeing now, so it, you're like, man, nah, that's nothing. I remember waiting in for gas, you know, hours for that limit of five or ten gallons, whatever it was. I, was, I wasn't quite around. Um, but most of those numbers in there, they're, they're decent. So approximately 2.8% over the last 40 years. And again, the current year is bad. We're seeing the biggest uh, rises in energy, which is um, gas and, and electricity and um, fuel for your car, right, things like that and food and shelter, so housing, the housing market phew, went crazy right now, right? So over the last 40, 2.8, and that was taken from, um, well, my source is at the end, but US inflation, something talk of. So what does that mean in terms of your salary? Well, if we took a 2% salary, I put that in the middle here, uh, 2%, it's kind of light green, and uh, the darker green is the inflation. And then I threw in like, well, what if you just got a thousand a year increase? What is that at? And I chose 50,000 as a starting point, just uh, pretty 
random, I guess, especially around here. Uh, and you could see inflation, right, is uh, kicking your salary's butt. So 2%, you're happy you got that raise each year. Are you actually getting a raise? Like cost of goods, you're actually not making as much as you did the year before. And a couple years, like fine, you don't notice it, it too bad. But 20 years later, I mean, there's quite a difference there. Rather than earning 80 something thousand a year, you're down in the low 70s. Now that's every year, right? Not, it's not just, oh, I took a $10,000 cut one year. We're, we're com compounding that year to year to year. So salary negotiations, and I am about out of time. Things to think about. What's the first thing to go often? You, you take this job, you're like, oh, awesome benefits. I get this, I get that. Those are usually the first things to go that I have seen and off of sources and websites that I pulled off of. Um, it can confer, like, you want that brass tax. You want that hard dollar, right? Like, if you are in a place to negotiate. Some jobs, you go in, here's your salary. That is what it is. There is no room for negotiation. But there are things often you can negotiate. Uh, healthcare benefits, okay, you might see a cut in what your employer pays. Uh, dental, vision, and life, your premiums and all those things can go up. Uh, 401k matches, pension, retirement, stock options. Uh, Enron, they put all this money into their company, company fell out, lost it all. Right? That, those things happen. Do you get a sign-on bonus? Do you have stipends? Uh, how much sick leave do you have? Parental leave, PTO. Are they going to reimburse you for school, college? Overtime, that's often the first thing to go. You're, you're banking on all these overtime hours and they start cuts, gone. Right? Uh, no longer do you get a company car or a fuel card. So these are great things. I'm not discrediting them, but they're also things that could slowly fade away. Okay? It's all about you, your wants, and your needs. And my recommendation, go for that dollar. Right? Usually, usually, they don't decrease your salary. You may not see an increase, but they may decrease those things. Any questions? Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it.